All right, so this will be the next video in getting data from web series for Excel. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to import JSON data to Excel. For a sample data, I'm gonna go to City of Chicago data portal. And here there are different data sets. We'll just pick one. So I'll just go here and look at this education. Doesn't really matter which one. So I'll click on that. We'll see what we have here. Yeah, different data sets. So I want one of the data sets. Uh, like this one should be fine. Libraries, locations, hours, and contact information. I'm gonna click on that one. It's gonna open this. Just to get a preview of this data, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that it should look like this. See, we have the name, we have the hours of operation, the address, the phone number, basically library information, and it goes for multiple pages, as you can see here but I'm looking for JSON. So if I go here and do export, that doesn't give me a JSON option, but it should be somewhere in here, maybe under API. Yeah, there it is. See, API, API endpoint is JSON. If I copy that and open that link, there is our JSON data. So, Keep in mind that this looks nice like this because I have an extension installed, but usually it would look like this, like this row data. It really doesn't matter. So that's really our JSON here. Now, just to go over this, I'm gonna go to this one so we have a nicer view. What's happening here if I just collapse all? See, we have this zero, one, two, three, five, basically all of this, apparently 80 of those, those are, 80 locations for libraries. So if I open zero, that will be the first one. We see the name, we have the hours, we have the address, the city state. And then the next one is gonna be the next library and so on. So basically it's an array of objects here in our JSON. And what we're gonna do, we basically just gonna import this. So I'm just gonna copy that link, go back to Excel. And in Excel, I'll go under data tab again, and I'm gonna find the option from web. So here there is gonna be an option from file and from JSON file, but I don't want it to be from a file on this computer. I want to basically go to the web and get it from the web. So I'm gonna do from web. So I'm gonna do from web and then paste the JSON link, hit okay hit connect. Now keep in mind that uh, if you don't see this from web option, it could be under this get data from other sources section. If you don't have this get and transform, that means you might be on older version of Excel. So you might need to install Power Query add-on to get these options. I'm gonna go ahead and click connect here. That's gonna get us to our Power Query and basically we get all of this stuff. See, there's 81 total. And if I scroll up, there is one here on top. And basically every single one of these is what we call a record. Let me open the magnifier. See, we have record, 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 record. Now we don't want this. We want this to be translated to a table so that we can get columns and stuff. See right now it's a list. If I right click on that, that says a list, there's this option to table. I'm gonna click on that. And here it gives us this. So do you want to select a delimiter? So I'm just gonna leave it default. I'm not setting any delimiter, uh, nothing else, just hit okay. And what we're gonna get is this now. It's still gonna say record, 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 record. But what you're gonna see on top here, see there is this expand icon. If I click on that, it will basically show me all those values from that JSON object. Just select the ones you need out of here. So for me, I'm just gonna leave all of them on, scroll down, hit okay. And see how everything is now nicely. This is column one, that's the name of the library. We have this hours of operation, the address, the city, the state, etc. All of this information about it. You could rename this column. So if you don't like this, you can double click and say name and basically just double click and change the names of columns. 
You could also transform some of this information to something that's easier for you to work with. So for example, see there is this uh, semicolon, see Sunday closed semicolon, Monday, Wednesday, 10 to 6 semicolon. So it seems like semicolon is separating these different things here. So we can use that in our advantage to split this into multiple columns. So I'm going to click on that and see here on top. So if I go under back under home, if you're not already under home, under home, there is going to be this option split columns. So I'm going to do split columns by delimiter. And the delimiter I'm going to choose is not the space, it's that semicolon. That's what I'm looking for. So there it is, semicolon. You can just split by the first one or the last one. But in my case, I want to split one column for each one of these. So I'm going to do each occurrence of the delimiter. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see how now I separated that. See, the first column is the Sunday, then Monday through Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. We could also use this comma to separate, see, Sunday from closed, Monday, Wednesday from 10 to 6. So same thing, you would just click and select the comma to separate that. I like this, so I'll just keep whatever it is. I just wanted to show you that you can do this type of stuff. I'm going to get rid of this magnifier. Now let's see what else we have here. So if I keep going to the right. Oh, so what is that? So apparently there is a record here after this website thing. Let's go back and look at our JSON. So, oh, that's probably this thing. See, there's this location. It's an object again inside of this. So if I open that, it has a type and coordinates, and then it's a point type. And then if I open this, there is the location right here. So it's an object in an object in here, which is this one actually is an array from the look of it. So we should be able to expand this location too. And if I go back here, see if I click on that, that's the record stuff right here. I'm going to click on that expand and see there is the type and coordinates exactly like it was there. Two things. I'm going to hit OK. That will open those. And that second one, see, is a list because it's an array. So array, this coordinate comes as a list of two elements. Now, if I go back, that list also has this expand option. So see, there is expand to new rows. So if I do that, what's going to happen because we have two in here, it will basically just copy the same first library on this first line and make a duplicate out of it, this West town, and then put another row of the same thing with the value of it. So just to show you what would happen, let me actually do that. And then I'll go back that step. So I'm going to do expand to new rows. And if I do that, see it extracted that 87 and 41, I will probably have to bring that magnifier back. See that negative 87 and 41. That was basically this and that. But because of this, because this was an array, we ended up here, so if I scroll left, see it's copying this. So the location address, see it's the same repeating twice. And if I scroll left, see the West Town is twice here in this list. So I probably don't want this. So I'm gonna go here and remove that last step. Now we have just one West Town here. I'm gonna go back here and find that same list. I'm going to open that and do extract values. And then we're going to do a delimiter for those. So I'm going to choose a comma as a delimiter and hit OK. And because I did that, see now instead of putting a new row, I just comma separated those two and put them side by side. And this is a different location. See, that's a little different. So now we have the location separated by a comma here. And if I scroll left, see, we have this West Town once. Now, if you didn't want those commas and you wanted just two columns, you could now take the comma and separate that similar to what I did before. I'm going to click on this, go here on top, split columns by delimiter. 
and choose the delimiter. In this case, that's going to be comma. That's good. Any one of these should be fine because I know we split into that. I'll just do left most in this case, just to be safe. Hit OK. See, now we have one column here, one column there. That will basically just be our coordinates. And that should do it. Now we've extracted this to a nice table result view to put this back to Excel. Once we're done, let me get rid of this magnifier. I'm going to go on top here, this close and load and close and load to here. I'm going to load it to a table if I want to be able to see it in Excel and then click on existing worksheet and then erase this and click where I want this loaded. So I'm going to just click in this a one hit. Okay. And that should now load that data from that JSON file right here. So we have this file with all of this data. And if we go right, we're going to see all those columns, including those latitude and all that stuff. And keep in mind, this is a link to that JSON feed. So if I wanted to refresh it as that data changes, I can just go here and refresh and pull the new information in this format with all this changes that I did. All right, so let's do another one really quickly. I'm going to go back to here. Let's open city of Chicago again. So I'm going to find something that doesn't hopefully have any personal information, although this is public data, but let's go here, see what we got. Mm. City owned land inventory. I guess that should work. Let's take a look at our data really quickly here. Yeah, I think that should be fine. So I'm going to go here again, go to API, get the uh, JSON and copy the link. Now keep in mind that that link that you get the JSON, sometimes it could be a lot in a single like query. See, we get a thousand in here which is fine. It could be all of them or maybe it's not so hard to say. Let's see how many data points they have. So this one has see 20,000 rows. So we get a thousand. So sometimes it's not going to give you all of them, but then this is where if we look at our documentation, we should be able to find a way to go through different pages. So let's see the category fruit API docs. And this is not going to be the same for all APIs. This is just going to be specific for this one, but all APIs usually have something paging through data. So let's see, see, we can do limit something offset something. All right. So like SQL pretty much. So if I take that copy after this question mark, see after this dot JSON, go back here and add it to the end of this like that. So that should basically now get us, let's collapse all just five starting from zero. See four and that's five. So that's because I did limit five offset zero. So we're starting from the beginning. We're doing limit of five. So if we do limit of 1000, that should get us the first 1000 results. And then we could basically paginate through this by offsetting the thousand and then getting the next thousand. And that would be the next list starting. So right now, if I look at this offset zero and we open the first item, see that will be the 7201 address. But if I paginate this offset to a thousand, if I open this, this would be now a different thing because we just skipped the first thousand. So we could use that in our advantage. So I'm going to go back here and just to have the links up in a larger format, because I'm pretty sure that was really small on a screen. See, that's pretty much the way that link looks. And what I really need to do, I need to basically do offset 
zero for the first one, then I will have to do offset thousand for the second one and offset 2000 for the third one. Hopefully you get the idea because it was only giving me a thousand per run. So that will get me 3000 now. So I'm gonna try to get all of this and join them together. So I'm gonna copy this first link that gets me that thousand, go under data and again from web, paste the URL, hit okay. And that gives me this. Now what I need to do, I need to basically just again, right click, make this to table and okay. And then I'm gonna expand the columns here. There we go. That's our data nicely laid out in different columns. So that actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna just close and load, close and load too. I don't want to load this yet. So I'm gonna load it to a connection only. So only create connection. I'm gonna hit okay. So that was this one. Maybe I should have given it a better name. So I'm gonna go back and actually right click and add it. I'm gonna call this page one right there on top and then close and load. Get back to this, see that's page one. So now because most of this is gonna be very similar, the link is gonna change. I'm just gonna make a copy of this, right click and duplicate. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go under this data source settings and here change the source. And here as the link, I'm gonna get rid of this link and just do that offset of 1000, which was the other one. You could copy and paste it, but I didn't copy that. So I'll just change this manually, hit okay and close. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. I'm gonna call this one page two and I'm gonna again close and load two, load this to a connection only. And then I'm gonna do this for page three. So I'll again, right click and duplicate, go data source settings. You see where this is going, change source. And here change that to offset 2000. Hit okay, close and refresh. Close and load, close and load two. And again, I'm gonna only create a connection. So now we have all of those three in different connections. So now I'm gonna just right click on this page one and do edit. And I wanna just combine all of those things together, all those three pages of data. So I'm gonna go here under append, just do append as new. So not mix this with the rest of them. So the ones that we want to append, so right now we have three or more tables. I'm gonna click on that option. So I want to do page one, which is already in here. Page two, I'm gonna add. Page, didn't call it page three apparently, but whatever it is, those three, I'm gonna hit okay. It's basically just gonna combine them all together in one. So I'm gonna just rename this, call it combined and then just close and load and close and load too. And this time I want to load this to our spreadsheet. So I'll do a table, existing worksheet. Actually, I don't have a good worksheet for this to do existing. I'm just gonna do new worksheet, that's fine. It will make a new tab for us. I'm gonna hit okay, here we go. So now if I scroll down, see we have 3000 records here. So we just took those three, combine them together, pull them as one, and this is it. And again, remember, this is connected to that data source. So if I refresh it and the data where to refresh on the website, it's still gonna update everything and pull all of that information. And that's a little bit about getting JSON data to Excel. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.